next talk would be Sage's research agenda in gastrointestinal endoscopic surgery, updated results of a Delphi study uh, presented by Dr. Stefanides. <clears throat> My name is Paul Montero. I'm going to be presenting on behalf of the entire uh, Sage's research committee and uh, Delphi task force and on behalf of my colleague, Dr. Stefanidis. We appreciate the opportunity. Oh, this is actually the wrong presentation. This should be number 88. Uh, in 2007, uh, the Delphi task force was created at the request of the Board of Governors of SAGES uh, to create a sur surgical uh, agenda, a research agenda. The purpose of that agenda is to uh, use this as a tool to assess the importance of certain research questions, uh, particularly in light of the fact that our industry support for grants is waning, and we've seen this past year the, the smallest amount of support. Uh, it can also be used for any investigators uh, thinking of certain questions and identifying knowledge gaps. So this was created using a Delphi methodology in 2007. Do we have the right talk by chance? It's under Stephanie. 88. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, there are no relevant disclosures from anyone on the committee. So this is the report from 2007 uh, based on a Delphi study. And again, the, the research agenda allows investigators to identify knowledge gaps and it helps guide grant review committees uh, in terms of uh, assessing the importance of certain research. Uh, due to the rapid evolution of this particular field in surgery, uh, it is now time to have an updated research agenda. So the Delphi method is uh, something that was initially developed by the RAND Corporation. That's a nonprofit United States government funded uh, corporation that assesses long-term trends in science and technology, including healthcare. Uh, it was formed in 1948. And Delphi happens to be the location where uh, a Greek uh, prophet was uh, often sought for advice on uh, all kinds of things, uh, many of them famous, including the prediction that King Leonidas and his 300 were going to perish in Thermopylae, although it doesn't really take a profit to really predict that when they're facing the entire army of Xerxes. Nevertheless, the, the point of a, of a Delphi method is to have anonymous uh, information, a reiterative process in a controlled feedback setting with statistical aggregation of the responses so that there's minimal bias. The uh, expert opinion here is actually provided by you, the SAGES membership. And so here has, here's how it was done. We did a web-based survey uh, to all the SAGES membership. And uh, in the first round, we simply asked, what do you think are the important research questions that need to be addressed? All responses were considered and reissued uh, in the second round. However, many of them were repetitive. And so to get to round two, we collated many of the questions and also clarified them uh, for clarity's sake. This ended up in 89 unique research questions, which we then reissued to the entire SAGES membership and asked them to rank them on a Likert scale with the top 40 being selected for round three. Turns out there were 41 because in the 40th place there was a tie. And in the final round, we asked uh, the rank to, to have them ranked the top 40 questions. Uh, you can see in comparison to the original 2007 uh, research agenda Delphi study, there have been a few trends. There tends to be more interest in technology and techniques as well as in hernia repair uh, five years later. And still holding strong are uh, endoscopic and foregut as well as bariatric questions. The top 10 research questions as uh, created by the Delphi study this past year uh, are here before you with the number one question being, how do we best train, assess, and maintain proficiency of surgeons and surgical trainees in endoscopy, laparoscopy, and open surgery? We also did a sub-analysis this time around uh, comparing the responses from SAGE's leadership as defined by members of SAGE's committees versus the general membership. And we found that there was a higher response rate from SAGE's leadership. Uh, and overall, the SAGE's leadership tended to rank on a slightly lower importance uh, most of the questions that made the top 40. It, with the exception of non-clinical questions, the SAGE's leadership found the uh, policy and education-based research questions to be a little bit more of importance. Overall, however, uh, I think the leadership of SAGE's, i.e. the members of committees, do represent the overall membership well. 
uh, the top two questions were identical between both the leadership and the general membership, and the rank order in the top ten were also very similar. When we look back at the original SAGES research agenda from 2007 and all of the SAGES grants awarded since then, 40% were uh, grants specifically uh, addressing questions by this research agenda. And you might think that's a little on the low end, however, uh, we still have to base our uh, grant awards on scientific merit, and it also underlines the emphasis, uh, the importance of updating the research agenda, which we have now done. So in conclusion, we now have an updated research agenda. We were notified last week that it was accepted for publication. It will be uh, put into our website as a link for the next call for SAGES grants. And I uh, appreciate your attention. Uh, I want to thank the SAGES webmaster for all of his uh, IT help, as well as the SAGES research committee and SAGES for allowing us to do this study. Other questions from the floor? Can you talk about the acceptance and rejection for just a moment in terms of the main criteria that are causing uh, research grant applications to be rejected? Is it actually the quality of the scientific work or is it misplaced or inability to follow your, your directions? What are the main reasons that those 60% are not getting through? Well, it's actually not 60%. It's probably a higher than that. We have a lot of uh, competition. I think the third thing you mentioned, not really able to follow directions, sometimes will disqualify, uh, disqualify the research grants. In other words, there's strict criteria. Uh, you have to have certain page length. Uh, you have a very clear hypothesis. It's actually all submitted through the internet now, so those restrictions are generally followed. I have attended one of the actual grant review sessions, uh, and uh, it's very difficult because a lot of great uh, inquiring minds out there have good ideas, but uh, it's generally going to be the most feasible with a reasonable budget that supports the request for money. Thank you very much.